The House kicked off hearings for its new weaponization of the federal government subcommittee last week. And as I've said before, I have serious concerns as someone who tends to be very pro-law enforcement. It seems like this group is launching a crusade against federal law enforcement, which they claim has been politicized and are biased against the GOP. And as someone who supports our local cops, sheriff department, state troopers, and the FBI, I'm troubled by this push by some on the right to turn the FBI into a caricature, suggesting they're all a bunch of political hacks out to get political leaders on the right. An FBI led by Republican Chris Wray, who was appointed by President Trump. An FBI that has never in its history had a Democrat leading the organization. But to hear new committee chair Jim Jordan tell it, you'd think the FBI is packed with fire-breathing liberals out to get conservatives. In fact, the Ohio congressman seems convinced that the Bureau has fixed the past four elections against the GOP. 2016, they spy on Trump's campaign. 2018, it's the Mueller investigation. 2020, they suppressed the Hunter Biden story. 2022, they raid the president's home 91 days before an election, but they don't tell us about Joe Biden's classified document issue that they knew about prior to the election. And now you got the special counsel investigating President Trump and President Biden, uh, look, I mean, impacting what, what probably impacting the 2024 race, potentially. First of all, I don't know how special counsel investigations into both Trump and Biden would indicate a bias, but... Going back to the argument about 2016, the idea that the FBI meddled in favor of Democrats. Of course, the left, not the right, lost their minds when then-FBI Director James Comey came out 11 days before the 16 election and announced he was reopening the Hillary Clinton investigation. She was furious. Democrats were furious. Comey did that to help Democrats? And if the FBI wanted to sink Trump's campaign, they would have leaked before the election that there was a major Russia investigation ongoing. But they didn't. And the FBI critics from the right never talk about all the instances when the Bureau goes after Democrats, as they do regularly, even just in the past year. I've talked about this before. Former Democratic Congressman T.J. Cox of California arrested in August on charges of fraud, money laundering, campaign violations, could be facing upwards of 20 years in prison. He claims it's all political. Or Karen Carter Peterson, the former head of the Louisiana Democratic Party, she pleaded guilty to a count of wire fraud and was just sentenced to 22 months in prison after an FBI investigation found she defrauded donors out of more than $100,000 to feed a gambling addiction. Or former Democratic Tallahassee, Florida Mayor Andrew Gillum, who ran against Ron DeSantis for governor. In June, he was hit with conspiracy and wire fraud charges. He recently moved to have the case thrown out. The judge rejected it. Gillum's argument, the prosecution was politically motivated. Sound familiar? We hear that line an awful lot these days from people on both sides of the aisle. And that's the point. Look, our men and women in law enforcement work hard to try to mete out justice equally. Yes, they make mistakes. And yes, the FBI has been and should be criticized for those mistakes, as they have been by both the FBI inspector general, who investigated the Russia investigation, and even the bipartisan Senate Intel Committee report. But neither of those investigations found any evidence that politics motivated the errors or the judgment calls. John Durham's investigation was theoretically supposed to blow open the politicized corruption in our intel agencies and FBI, and yet it did nothing close to that. The FBI is doing a hard job every day. But let's ask a member of the weaponization of the federal government subcommittee, Republican Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. So what am I getting wrong here? Well, let's make a couple things clear here at the outset, Dan. Uh, look, the, the Republicans in the House and those who are on the Weaponization Select Committee are among the greatest champions for law enforcement and our brave rank and file FBI Agreed. agents and, and officers and everyone who works uh, in the Department of Justice at, at the agency level and the field office level. Our concern is very specifically with the very top level of leaders in the FBI. And this is not our word that you should rely upon. It's the word of whistleblowers and agents, field agents, those very people that we so respect, who are coming forward and telling us their stories and affirming things that we know sort of intuitively have happened. That's the, well, what the data we're collecting. Right when now. I listened to the FBI agent, the first one who testified at the weaponization hearing, um, you know, she didn't give any specific examples of being told to do something based on politics. She just said she was frustrated. She gave up. I think she was in, there in 1999, but just basically said that she was kind of just tired of the general things that were happening in the FBI. I mean, to make these sorts of allegations, this is serious stuff, to claim that Republican Chris Wray 
is out there targeting Republicans in an unfair way. And yet there hasn't been a single iota of evidence to suggest that major decisions made by the FBI have been politicized. Well, no, there actually has been quite a bit of evidence gathered, and, and not just from the whistleblowers. Some of this is public information. We know, for example, uh, that last year they, they targeted uh, parents, concerned parents who showed up at school board members and gave them a threat tag, labeled them as potential yeah. domestic terrorists, and began files on parents for showing up and protesting but, but, mass but, but, mandates. But you know it wasn't for showing. I mean, look, the bottom line is, look, I get that there's a debate over exactly how hard the DOJ should be going after uh, parents who were, in their view, potentially threatening people at school board meetings. Fair enough. Have that discussion, have that debate. That's not political. That could be a call that is a wrong call, right? You could say they're going too hard, but it's not that the DOJ or that, that in particular the FBI, and that's what I'm particularly focused on, is the FBI, led by Chris Wray, is somehow filled with these liberals who all want to bring down the conservatives. I mean, can you understand why that sounds kind of nuts? No, Dan, I can't, because you're, that belies the facts before us. Let me give you an example of the last week on January 23rd. A letter went out on FBI letterhead where they were comparing conservative Catholics to domestic uh, terrorists, domestic violence, domestic threats. They equated the two. We called them out on it, and they retracted the letter. Yeah. We're sending, we sent an information to Director Ray, a letter to him uh, just yesterday, asking him for the information. We want to know who's involved with those yeah. decisions and why they're doing it. Dan, you're, you're ignoring the fact that they colluded with big tech during the last election cycle. The FBI had a, quote, cozy relationship with Facebook and Twitter and the people involved, and they were censoring and silencing but, people that had different political views. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, let's stop right there. Facts. Let's stop right there. Who did they censor? Sure. The, the FBI didn't censor anybody. The FBI, and we haven't had a single piece of testimony from someone who said the FBI told us to censor it. No one. It, it was a total Dan, failure in that regard in the hearings. Dan, I watched the entirety of it. Stay tuned. Dan, we've had one hearing, one hearing last yeah. Thursday for the Weaponization Committee. When the Church Committee held its hearings uh, in the mid-70s, the one that this is styled after, when they had abuses in the intelligence agency, they had 120 public hearings before they drew their conclusions and, and instituted reforms. We're just All right. getting started. All right. But we know that evidence is out there. We've gathered some of it, and the American people are going to be able to see it and draw their own conclusions. So, uh, look, I'm with you. I want to be fair. We're being objective about this. This is this is not for politics. This is to shore up the people's faith in our institutions because that it's at record lows, and that's a threat to all of us. Well, let's talk about that. Because at, at the hearing uh, last week, you talked about the public's eroding trust in the FBI. I want to listen to what you said at that hearing. Professor Turley just cited statistics here today that the lar there are large numbers of Americans who now distrust the FBI. Our task here is to determine exactly how that's happened and how to correct that framework. Well, isn't the biggest reason Americans have lost faith in the FBI that you and so many of your colleagues are constantly slinging mud at them? <laughs> no, Dan, it's because of the things that we're talking about. They see that conservatives and people that have different political viewpoints and the current administration and the people in charge of the FBI and the Department of Justice, for that matter, are being targeted. They're being censored and silenced. This is not hyperbole. This is not some sort of conspiracy theory. We know what happened. When you're talking about the collusion with the FBI and big tech in the last election cycle, that is pu public information. It's not even being disputed. They had regular meetings. They said the FBI, you could hardly tell where the FBI ended and the big tech platforms began. This is you, not you, appropriate behavior. You, you it shows a hostility towards the First Amendment. I apologize. You, you used use the word collusion there in the same way that yeah. people who wanted to go after Donald Trump used the word collusion about Russia, <laughs> right? They would say, well, he had conversations. Well, Don Jr. had meetings with him, etc. It's the same sort of misleading use of the word collusion in, in this case. The bottom line is, of course, the FBI had conversations with big tech. I hope they have conversations with big tech. I would think you hope that they have conversations with big tech. But what you don't want them doing, you don't want them to have any communication at all, no matter if they've got an investigation ongoing, if they think that big tech can help them in any way, you've got a terror investigation, don't talk to this them. This is, wait a minute, but this was not about investigation. I understand it wasn't. This is the, 
this is the no. This is the, the, the what the evidence will show, and we'll, we'll present this in the hearings. We already because we already gathered this. The FBI went to Big Tech and said, "We don't like what this person is saying. We don't like what this uh, politician is saying. We don't like what this candidate is saying." And we 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 would uh, suggest that you censor and silence their okay. viewpoints. That is exactly when, what when happened. I see that evidence. When I see that evidence, I will go on and apologize because I have not seen an iota of that of what you just laid out that you said we're going to see. But look. As, I, as you said, I think it's fair for you to say, be patient. There's going to be more. And I'm going to promise you that I'm going to continue uh, watching. Let me just ask you a final question, because uh, Chair Comer had suggested that the Hunter Biden investigation on the DOJ side be delayed so that you guys could begin your investigation there. That seems to me kind of crazy, right? After all these calls for the DOJ to investigate Hunter Biden, and I think it's a legitimate investigation. I think we'll see what the outcome is. And I think it's a good thing that the Trump appointed U.S. attorney is the one who's there in charge of that investigation. But the idea that the DOJ would put on pause its Hunter Biden investigation so you guys could go about investigating him? Well, what, what my good friend Jamie Comer is referring to there is in the past when the Department of Justice has appointed a special counsel, they have then magically declared, waved a wand over everything related to that and said it's off limits for congressional oversight. This is a very, very important responsibility that we have under the Constitution. This is a critical component of our checks and balances in our system. The system of justice has to be fair. We have to have equal justice under the law, or the people will wind up resolving their disputes on their own in the streets. We right? don't this want is, that. This is really, really important stuff. It is and important. I think we need the opportunity to do it. It is important stuff. I just hope that you're being measured in the way you're talking about it publicly. And let's do this, Congressman. Next time you come on, let's talk about a different aspect of law enforcement where I'm confident that you and I will be in full agreement. I look forward to it. Thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate it.